Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending our presentation today, it being brought to you by Florida Power and Light. It is my distinct pleasure um, to announce that uh, the state of the economy in Clay County is strong. We have a 3.8% unemployment rate with 107,079 persons employed. We have over 761 new building permits so far this year, ending in May. Over $500 million worth of road infrastructure projects ongoing. Over $500 million in new construction, major projects going that we've actually uh, worked on. So with that and uh, the excitement building around all of Space Florida's investments, I, I am proud to announce uh, we have Tony Gannon who serves as Space Florida's Vice President of Research and Innovation uh, here today to talk and uh, give a brief overview. In his role, he generates leads for Space Florida research and innovation initiatives, as well as commercialization and business development efforts. He is responsible for initiating business development opportunities and partnerships that capture expansion activities to increase Florida's aerospace industry's market share. Having worked with Space Florida since the organization's inception, Tony's past projects and activities include the Space Florida Academy, Space Florida Internship Program, NASA Florida Space Grant Consortium, Suborbital Flight Incentive Program, and the International Space Station Research Competition. The latter program provides unique microgravity research opportunities for seven universities and U.S. research entities on board the ISS. He leads Space Florida's capital generation program and acceleration events to stimulate startups, early stage and growth stage companies, and assist the formation of vibrant capital formation ecosystems across the state of Florida. Hailing from Ireland, Tony formerly worked with Ireland's Department of Finance and later as manager of education at Kennedy Space Center here in Florida. He holds a bachelor's of commerce from University College Dublin, Ireland, and a diploma in economics from the former Dublin School of Commerce. With that, let's give a great welcome to Tony. Thank you, well, sir. Well, well, thank you very much indeed uh, to all of you here in, in Clay County. Uh, I'm very honored to be presenting and Probably um, I should also especially mention Laura Pavlos, who sent the invitation and your good self. And also uh, thank my good colleague, Matt Chestnut, who I think was originally scheduled, but has other commitments today. So I'm happy to fill in in Matt's place. So I hope you guys can understand the Irish accent, despite 30 years living in the U.S. and being honored to be a citizen of the um, of United States. Uh, sometimes I say a few words, they're a little tomato and tomato-ish, uh, but I think you'll get the picture. Um, very proud to make a presentation and please at any point, um, if there are questions, I'd be very happy to try and respond as best I can to those. Um, probably should start off. And I think Laura is going to line up a couple of slides and we'll try not to, um, we try and make these uh, interesting and tell a story, the human story, which is the most important thing about any of our business development deals in Space Florida. For those of you not familiar with us, uh, we are a quasi state of Florida entity. We are not a nonprofit. In fact, that we can make profit from deals and, the, and you might say the finances are fed back into the coffers for the state of Florida and the taxpayers benefit. We focus very, very hard on aerospace innovation and several of those areas that are in our president's mind, our president being Frank DiBello, uh, include aerospace. So it's not just aerospace. It might be innovation. It might be artificial intelligence. Could even be bioagricultural studies. It's a very wide area of interpretation. So what have we done? Well, I, did, I will mention one particular project because it was, a, you might say, from start to finish, Space Florida worked closely with Airbus OneWeb satellites. When they expressed to the governor, we would like to set up an installation here, an assembly point for 
very technical skilled workers from Florida to incorporate and assemble those satellites here at Exploration Park. And so we worked very closely with them. Uh, they saw the advantage of being in Florida as distinct from maybe Texas or California, where we know taxes or rather taxes in Texas can be a little bit higher than in Florida. So we helped them develop the facility with the RFP, the request for proposals. We found builders. We worked with OneWeb Satellites as they set up this installation. Uh, it has today over 221 persons working in this facility. And I know that even in the walk-in pace for young technicians coming to work with them, the average salary is about $75,000 a year, which for a young man or woman actually is a good start and hopefully the beginning uh, of many suitable increases as we go through the facility. Um, they have a 30-year lease, Airbus One Web, uh, and of course the creation of jobs, which was actually one of our most important um, aspects of that. Uh, if you could move forward, Laura, uh, to the next slide, I would greatly appreciate it. So this is um, a little bit about the structure. Um, I don't like to go along with, two, you know, these, a slide like this is not exactly uh, the highlight of anyone's day. But essentially, as I mentioned, public corporation, uh, we do some pretty awesome things, certainly on the business development side of the equation. They're listed here very simply, and I hate to read the slide, but I should do so in the areas of conduit financing, allows business to access facilities, equipment and tooling, which is precisely what we did for Airbus OneWeb satellites. Synthetic leasing, and then, of course, the tax advantages that we can offer companies from not just from the United States, but indeed from throughout the world. Airbus One Web is a conglomerate of French, um, a French partnership with a Florida company. And so that international favor as even greatly to you have an influx of new people buying homes, setting up um, uh, their bank accounts and indeed uh, investing in our state. We do pretty much deal, as you can see from this slide, with all the big players. And that has often been, a you know, it, it's throughout the state, Har L3 Harris Corporation, Airbus, Blue Origin, of course, we all know, Jeff Bezos, and they have a new installation down at Kennedy. But their job numbers are something in the region of 800. And it's not just for central Florida. It's indeed for the entire state. SpaceX with operations in many locations, United Launch Alliance. These are the big guys, you might say, employing hundreds to thousands of persons working in the space program. And for the time, I thought, oh, yeah, we're fulfilling our mission. But, of course, we quickly realized that we need to do a lot better than this. We need to get it down to the supply chain and talk to smaller companies as well, which actually, for those of you who have not been to Kennedy Space Center over the past year, for obvious reasons, uh, you will see uh, the Blue Origin facility, which is comprised of several uh, large, extremely large facilities with millions of square feet, this is just a corner of one of the buildings uh, with something in the region of 800 uh, persons working at it. What makes Blue Origin so truly unique in the Florida area is that they don't just simply assemble rockets, but they actually manufacture. And so you could say that raw material goes in one door and a finished rocket comes out the other. Of course, SpaceX, we're all very familiar with SpaceX and the launches. And um, I don't know whether, Laurie, we can show the next slide as well. This is a launch from Kennedy Space Center. But more interesting, this is not necessarily a launch. But if we touch the bottom of the screen, you'll see this is one of the reusability factors, the actual booster coming back to where it launched from, which is quite amazing. And this whole factor really inevitably brought about the development of commercial aerospace. If you can send a rocket into space, send that payload up and then bring the actual hardware, the rocket back to Earth, you're saving millions and millions of dollars. So quite, a, quite an achievement to do this. And so that was our launch from 39A. And I mentioned just, uh, and this is a good slide, uh, solving Earth's problems, which might seem a little grandiose, but if you take the understanding of the word aerospace, you can see it would, it would incorporate satellites, satellite communications. It also may incorporate, as you see on our left-hand side, innovative medicines and healthcare products being developed through the aerospace program, 
much of which is developed for astronauts in space. But of course, they only numbered in the dozens. Down on Earth, it's billions of people. Uh, the development of new unmanned vehicles, which can be used for agriculture, can be used for military purposes, can be used for all sorts of, you might say, checking on growth and facilities that are being processed. And then also in the communications area. And this particular supply chain, all of those industries, they're very important to the entire state of Florida. And luckily for us, they're scattered from Pensacola down to Miami to Key West, from Jacksonville, right over to Tampa, St. Pete area. We'll just move on to the next slide and show exactly what we are trying to do. I'm very fortunate to raise this, what you might call capital raising program. Uh, inevitably, we have applications from early stage companies, which may comprise simply from one to maybe a hundred employees. And these companies apply to present in front of the teams of investors the investors, typically about 100 would be present with billions of dollars on the table, and they're looking for solid investments. And this picture was taken following one of our uh, recent um, uh, capital events. In fact, the lady on the left with the red shirt is actually from Tallahassee, and she uh, developed a computer-generated program for algorithms. Uh, the gentleman on, this, on her left, which is more to the center, with a check for $30,000, actually operates out of Embry-Riddle, uh, sense attack propulsion, and they were tremendously successful. So to entice the best companies to these, what we call aerospace events, we offer prize money, typically of $100,000 in total, divided four ways. So it may be 30,000, 40,000, and say two groups of 15,000 each to encourage companies to supply, to provide their applications, to present to the investors, and hopefully then they'll pick up lots and lots of capital from these instant investors. And we can move on to the next slide as well. Um, so how do you connect? So if you are an instant company and you're in that wide area on interpretation of aerospace, we just, the bad news is, we just completed last week, June the 10th, which made a heck of a busy week for me and my, my colleagues. Um, we have now raised over $585 million in six years for the participating companies. And that may be, in some cases, a $500,000 uh, award or maybe an investment of two to three to maybe even $50 million. And the, we've made the competition because of the COVID restrictions. It's also international. So as you see here, there uh, we list Israel, France, Brazil, United Kingdom, Spain, also Japan, as potential company, countries where they're terribly interested in investing and starting off, you might say, uh, extensions of their companies in our good state. This is a, a very interesting event. And if you're interested in participating and presenting, uh, you may win an award on the day, but more importantly, you get just your face of your company in front of very wealthy investors. And that is really the game where capital is required. Space Florida will come to the rescue, hopefully, and help you achieve that goal. Uh, we can move forward again. I appreciate it. Um, at the end of that um, series of presentations, and just you see my email address there, tganinaspaceflorida.gov. I would like to remind you, though, that in addition to having this capital acceleration program, I'm also very fortunate to manage um, a joint research program with the state of Israel. So we have a collaborative project, the state of Florida, collaborating with the state of Israel for $1 million awards per annum. And just last Friday, those awards were announced uh, by our lieutenant governor in Tallahassee. The uh, application process, uh, it does take a while. We will be issuing an RFP in October. And I truly would highly recommend that if you're interested in awards, uh, receiving funding support for capital projects, or if you simply want to receive an award, which could actually vary from 100000 to approximately $300,000 to undertake innovation, innovation and uh, uh, something which you feel in a collaborative effort will make your company achieve its sales, uh, generate more interest in the company, and essentially move you up that financial ladder. We're very happy, and I in particular would be very happy to meet and talk to you and help you get the process of applying and so forth. So um, 
that's kind of a condensed, and I apologize a little on the short side, but um, as you see, Space Florida involved in so many projects. Um, it can be, in some instances, as you know, local universities, whether it's UNF or Embry-Riddle or even UC, uh, UCF as well, the University of Central Florida. We like to work with small aerospace companies in that general area, maybe help them relocate help them find customers, help them raise capital, and also as well, uh, generate awards, which can really make a difference to, an, um, to a, a small company. So I'll pass it back to our host. And um, if there are any questions, I am very happy to answer. And thank you all, everyone, for your attention. And uh, it's been my pleasure to make a presentation to you. Well, that concludes our presentation. If there are any questions, we'll be happy to either take them via chat or send a follow-up email and we'll get back with you. Um, it, there's a lot of things going on with Space Florida and investments in Cecil Field. And since Clay County is just right down the road, we look forward to those opportunities and partnerships to help co-locate companies here. It's very important that we network, reach out and share information on the ongoing projects that are here. Again, we thank you for your time. Um, Tony, thank you for the presentation. We look forward to working with you and Matt and all the folks at Space Florida in the future. Well, thank you. And I just might add, as you reminded me about Cecil Field, um, as you might, uh, as you know very well, both Cecil Field, Titusville, and what we call our launch and landing facility at Kennedy Space Center are three certified, verified, um, aerospace uh, uh, airports in the true sense. Um, it was last weekend, we had a very interesting space tourism group called Space Perspectives, who are in the process of developing a program through balloon flights, taking visitors up to the height of 20 miles. Um, it's about approximately 110,000 feet. I don't know the cost per person, but this is exactly the kind of activity that would be very uh very well welcomed in places like Cecil Field, Titusville, and Kennedy, where you literally, rather than have the trauma of a launch with ro rockets tearing away to, and then only spend one minute in space, you can then go up 20 miles where you will see the blackness, the stars of space, and indeed the curvature of the earth, but in a very relaxed, almost like a balloon flight, and then land afterwards and be brought home safely. It's a, a great opportunity. I'd like to know the cost. It's something if I had some extra money, I'd love to participate in the future. But uh, for some of uh, you folks that want to work with the company, they're called Space Perspectives. And we're very excited at Space Florida because it's something that can be shared throughout our great state. And we're very, very mindful of the importance of ensuring that the collaboration, with the universities to all parts of the state and indeed with local industry, that we keep up that pressure. So again, thank you and allowing me to say a little plug for Cecil Field, which we are very proud of as well. Well, we'll take a shameful plug for Camp Blanding and the Keystone Heights Airport also in our Reynolds Industrial Park, Port and Marina. So they all working together, transportation and logistics. Uh, we can support any activities at Cecil Field or the Space Coast. So we're very happy to uh, assist in whatever way we can. Thank you all. Have a great day.